Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new week. We are very happy to welcome you to our show titled Speak of Africa. We want to thank all our subscribers. We want to thank all our viewers. Without you, we will not really have a show. We started this show because we wanted to have a platform where we can help you raise your level of consciousness. We have a lot of problems in the modern line. We're in the diaspora, but a lot of times we don't really feel connected to the diaspora. We don't really understand African problems. With this show, we are creating a platform where you can discuss Africa's problems in its entirety. That's what we do on this show. We discuss Africa's problems from an African perspective. This week, what's going on in the motherland? A whole lot is going on in the motherland. It's a new year. There is this scramble for Africa. The big guys, the United States of America, France, Russia, China, they are scrambling to get a piece of the pie. They are scrambling for Africa's resources. So what are Africans doing about it? That's the question inquiring minds want to know. Are we going to do the same thing our forefathers did in the past? Are we going to repeat the same mistakes? Does history not tell us anything that we better be prepared to deal with our problems? Our problems, as Ali Masri says in Africa, a triple heritage. We inherited legacies from Christianity, Islam, and indigenous African culture. These three legacies form the texture of the African experience. How are we going to improve on our weakness in the past? Slavery, we made a lot of mistakes. Colonialism, we made a lot of mistakes. Neocolonialism, we made a lot of mistakes. How can we learn from these mistakes? Today, these big powers, superpowers, are fighting to conquer us. You look at what is happening in Central African Republic. America is back. America had made an exit from Africa. But after the Wagner Group spread its tentacles all over the Central African Republic and other countries, they kick out the French. America is beginning 2024 by making an entrance into Africa. And the Central African Republic is a good place where you're going to see America. France has been kicked out of the Central African Republic. Ashanti Tuadera is beginning to make deals now with the Americans. Americans are very uh, smart. They know that they have more resources than Russia. So America is using security firms, just like they did in Iraq, to make an entrance into the Central African Republic. That's what America is doing. For example, you have a US security firm called Bankrupt Global Development. Bankrupt Global Development. Google this company. You see what they do. They take advantage of the misery of people in wartime environments or war zones. So they give you the impression that they're going to be a messiah. They're going to fix things for you. But at what cost? They're going to exact Shylock, Shylock the Jew. They're going to extract a pound of flesh from you. That's what they do. Ashanti Tuadera has just invited the U.S. security firm, Bancroft Global Development, into the Central African Republic. They're going to kick out the Wagner Group, and they will take over the country. We're letting you this know from the very beginning. That's what is happening. We knew this is going to happen. We've been preparing you for it. France is out. Russia is in. But America is kicking out Russia now. So after the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin, the Wagner Group's days in Africa are numbered. The U.S. is making a new foray into Africa. They have the resources, they have the military muscle, and I think they're going to take advantage of this. Whatever is happening in Gaza and Ukraine may just be a distraction. America is keeping their interests right up front. They're looking at gaining from Africa, and that's really what we're seeing. So then what about Ambazonia? Well, some of you have been telling me that, oh, Ambazonia, the war, the revolution is lost. It's not lost. You cannot kill an idea. You can kill the people harboring this idea, but the idea lives on in the minds of so many people. Mr. Paul Beer made his uh, 
end of year uh, speech to his nation, La République du Cameroun. He celebrated uh, the vanquish of uh, the forces of uh, Ambazonia. But there are still problems in that part of the world. The Ambazonia have lost a lot of fighters, but the dream of a better country lives on. And today, we mark the celebration of the Nira 10, the guys who were arrested with Siseku Ayoktabe in Nigeria and flown to Cameroon. We call them the Nira 10 because they were arrested in a hotel in Nigeria, Nira Hotel. These are prisoners of conscience. La Republic was boasting that Mr. Pobia was talking about peace keeping dialogue in his uh, end of year speech, dialogue and peace in the international community. But this is a shame because he, he cannot even handle peace in his own country, in his own homeland. Why is he worrying about the international community when he cannot handle peace in his own country? And that's why we look at someone like probably yeah, like a phony. It's a guy who is not serious. Uh -huh. Because he cannot handle peace in his own country. Then even in the north of La Republic du Cameroon, Adamawa province, there are problems. A lot of kidnapping. Kidnapping has become big business. They are kidnapping not just uh, ordinary citizens, they are also kidnapping people who are part of Mr. Bia's security services. So kidnapping has become a serious problem. How come Mr. Bia is not understanding this? That's what I'm asking. The news we're reading, Marwa, Garwa, Ngaundere, especially Ngaundere, the degree of kidnapping is so high. So it needs to be brought down. Mr. Bia doesn't know how to handle this problem. The problem lives on. Then, of course, the opposition is already positioning themselves for 2025. Maurice Camto, for example, the leader of MRC, Pari, he's thinking that the opposition should form a united front, fill one candidate who should run for election in 2025. That's assuming that Mr. Paul Bia may not run or may run again. But Mr. Paul Bia has not made any announcement yet. The opposition expects him to announce that he's not running again. But he has a big machinery on the ground, a big fraud machine. This fraud machine will make sure that nobody else can win the election. The fraud machine is backed up by a big army. If he loses, he will tell them, if you say I, I lost the election, I'm going to send the soldiers to kill you. So most of the people, even the judges, are afraid to pronounce a verdict against Mr. Paul Bia's forces. But of course, today too, we learn about the loss of uh, somebody in Cameroon, Professor Joseph Owona. Joseph Owona was a professor at the University of Yaoundé. At one point, he was the director of ERIC. Then he was also a minister and also the secretary general at the presidency. He held a lot of top positions in the government. But before then, when I knew him back in 79 at the University of Yaoundé, his, his special course, we used to call it droit constitutionnel, constitutional law. He had this uh, note that he prepared and sold to students. They used to call them polycopies. That's how he made his money. At the time, you see that Joseph Owona taught also in many universities, like in Central African Republic, Congo. Whenever he discussed constitutional law or constitutions in Africa, he never used Cameroon as an example because he was afraid of spies in his class. His classes were always very big. He used to hold them in Amphi Set Sang, uh, Amphi 700, a very big uh, room, holding more than 700 students. How can you study in such an environment? I used to go to those classes just for fun because Joseph Onan's classes were fun. When you go there, a lot of comedy was really taking place. And that's what I used to enjoy. Whenever I was not busy with my class, I just said, no, let me go and just while away time at the, the law faculty where Owana was having his class. Sometimes Owana would be having fiery exchanges with the students. Some of the students knew him because they were his, his classmates. But they were still there, like the Bamlikis. Some people say, well, Obama, uh, Owana hated Bamliki guys so much. Why? It dates back to those his days. 
because he never liked Bamley Keys. So those Bamley Keys guys were cab drivers, but they were still not able to get a degree. So every year they were in the university because they wanted to collect money from scholarships. They used to call it bulls. It's like free money. The government will pay you to go to school. So you have, say, a hundred bucks a month that you pay the student to go to school. So most of these Bamliki guys who come to the school just because they want to collect this money, after the month ends, they'll go back and start driving their cab. So they will not come to school. So they will attend Obama's and uh, Obama's classes just for fun. They will insult him. They used to call him instituteur, which means primary school teacher. So they never wanted to respect him as a professor, a tenured professor. So they made fun of him as a primary school teacher, a villager. So it used to be a whole lot of fun. They go <laughs> back and forth between Owana and these guys. I used to have a lot of fun from it. But from there, I could tell that Owana was a tribalist, a bigot. When Bia came to power and Joseph Owana was selected to join the government, that's when you started seeing his tribalism. He hated the Bamlikis and he told them, you will never become president. Then he formed a singer, which is a group dedicated to Betty hegemony. He wanted the Betis to dominate Cameroon forever. And that's what he did. He built a singer. Today, we understand he has a son called uh, Owanangini, who has the same temperament, the same outlook. But death has come for Joseph Owana, and we think this is the beginning of the end of the Bia regime. Okay, some people think it will come to an end, but when God dies, God cannot die, but Bia will die. And that's when this regime will end. Okay? Tired of waiting in long lines at the emergency room or your doctor's office? You should be. Why wait in long lines for care? It's time for you to come to Lucille Urgent Care. Real care, no waiting. Lucille Urgent Care, the best place for true and loving care. Service at Lucille Urgent Care is convenient, fast, time efficient, affordable, accessible, transparent, and cost effective. Real treatment is your right. Indeed, it's not just a privilege or a pejorative. Skip the emergency room's long lines, kiss the ER goodbye, say farewell to your old doctor's office, pay less, save time, enjoy the excitement of convenience, receive immediate treatment, get the health care you need quickly and affordably. Lucille Urgent Care offers many express services, rapid COVID-19 testing, on-site prescription, preventative lab services, imaging and x-rays, urgent medical treatment for common illnesses and injuries, routine vaccines and flu shots, work-related injury services, pre-employment, occupational, annual, and sports physicals, immigration exams, and much more. Same-day treatment, rapid lab results, extended hours, weekend hours, no appointment necessary, no insurance necessary, no doctor necessary, walk-ins accepted, telemedicine available. We are open seven days a week with evening and weekend hours. We are located in Maryland, Lucille Urgent Care, 903 Half York Road, Towson, Maryland, 21204. Website, lucilleuc.com. Call at 443-275-1286 or 301-593-4897. Next, we take you to Congo DRC. Felix Shisekedi has just won a contested election. The election was chaotic, fraudulent, but people are saying that he has declared himself the winner. What's going to happen? Well, the members of the opposition are not willing to accept the results of this vote. CNI, which is the Electoral Commission, has said Felix Shisekedi is a winner. But most people don't believe it. They just feel this election was rushed. They were not even supposed to have this election. But Felix Shisekedi needed this election to buttress his democratic credentials. Initially, people were saying that he did not win the election the first time. Joseph Kabila just handpicked him and made it a backroom deal and made him president. So this time, he wants to tell the people that I have won re-election on my own terms. So I deserve to be president. Well. That's what the Congolese have to deal with. There's a whole lot of conflict going on, war in the east. M23 and other groups are roaming the, the territory. What is Felix Shikede doing about it? He's only fighting for power. He cannot solve that problem. What a shame. Rwanda is a very small country. But Rwanda is beating the shit out of uh, uh, Congo DRC. And they keep, that, keep complaining. 
nonsense. Next, we'll take you to Ethiopia. What is happening in Ethiopia? Well, after the civil war, Ethiopia has become really landlocked. After Ethiopia lost Eritrea, Ethiopia did not really have access to the sea. So sometimes Ethiopia will have to use Djibouti to get his stuff out to the international community, then receive goods. But now, Ethiopia has been looking for an outlet to the sea. And they found one with a deal they just struck with Somaliland. Somaliland is uh, an independent uh, society still under Somalia. They struck this deal with Abiy Ahmed, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, so that they can lease the, a port. This port now will give Ethiopia access to the sea. Somalia is not happy, so they had to protest. Big problem. What's going to happen next? It remains to be seen. After this, we'll take you to Nigeria. Nigeria is uh, a big country in Africa, and a lot is going on. We've told you that Nigeria has a lot of issues with corruption. We've been talking about insecurity, but insecurity is also tied to corruption. When you have a country that is very corrupt, it's difficult to secure the country. And when Bola Tinubu became president, his main target was Godwin Emefiele, who is the chairman of the Nigerian Central Bank. Immediately Bola Tinubu became president, he fired Godwin Emefiele. Why? We've gathered a whole lot of intelligence. When Bola Tinubu was running for president, the Central Bank decided to change the currency. When they changed the currency, they had to do away with the old Naira, and then they introduced new Naira notes. Godwin Emefiele was part of the uh, PDP party, so he thought by using these rules, he would be making Bola Tinubu unhappy, then Bola Tinubu would lose the election because he would not have access to foreign currency. But Bola Tinubu being a very smart politician and a tough guy, a mafia guy, he was still able to get his hands on those uh, new notes and still won the election. As a guy who likes to punish his enemies, the first target after he became president was to go after Godwin Emefiele. Godwin Emefiele has been in jail. In fact, the EFCC, the Economic and Financial Criminal uh, Commission, has been holding this guy hostage. Even though the courts of Nigeria have asked Bola Tinubu to release Godwin Emefiele, he has refused to do so. So he remains in custody. This week, there's a new chapter in this drama. Aliko Dangote, the richest man in Africa, the richest man in Nigeria, was also ac accused. So he's being investigated because they think that Godwin Emefiele was playing games with him to take foreign exchange and do business ab abroad. So people are saying that Godwin Emefiele, Aliku Dangote, and Bola Tinubu, they're all corrupt guys. Very corrupt. So why is Bola Tinubu doing all of this? Well, our informants have told us that Bola Tinubu is looking for a, a big payday. If Atiku can give him some big money, then he would let Godwin Emefiele go free. So it's, it looks like Godwin Emefiele is like, just like the fall guy. The target of Bola Tinubu actually is Aliko Dangote, because he has a lot of money. So now, by arresting Godwin Emefiele, they're now he knocking on the doors of uh, Aliko Dangote's company. A lot of money is going to flow. So a big settlement is going to take place. So don't be surprised when you hear that B Bola Tinubu has asked the EFCC to drop the case against Godwin Emefiele. That's how Nigeria goes. That's a country of corruption. Okay? But still in Nigeria, Shell is also having problems. For a long time, we've been complaining that Shell has been having a lot of oil spills. The people who live in those communities are not really benefiting. Shell is getting all this money. Shell has always been in trouble for a long time, since even the death of uh, Sarawiwa. The people who live in most of these border states are complaining that the environment is degraded and they are not getting any benefit, any returns for the oil that is piped from their community. So this is really bad. Then the final point we have to tell you about Nigeria is uh, 
certificates. Nigeria has been complaining about certificates from Benin and Togo, but they are widening their dragnet to include Kenya and Uganda. They say most of the degrees from some of those universities are fake. It manufactures those fake degrees. You go to school for one week, then they give you a degree. How can that be? That's the question a lot of minds are asking. Next, we'll take you to Senegal. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Senegal is Makisao's country. This week, Ousmane Sankor has been derailed again. It seems as if he may not be able to run for president next month. He's meeting one challenge after another. He encounters one challenge after another. They will allow him to run. Then they say, oh no, his paperwork is incomplete. Come on. Why do you keep playing these games? When is he going to have time to campaign and run for this election? So it looks like Makisa is just looking for ways to put stumbling blocks on the path of uh, Usman Sankor. But is this going to all go well for democracy in that country? We don't think so. We take you now to South Africa. Last week, we told you that Cyril Ramaphosa had taken Israel to the ICC, the International Criminal Court. This week, as we expected, America is saying, oh no, the case is meritless. There's no merit. If you are committing genocide in Gaza, it's okay. Continue committing genocide in Gaza. And we're even overhearing that there's misinformation. Benjamin Netanyahu wants to ship the people from Gaza to Ida, Congo, Chad, or Rwanda. But most of these African leaders, like Paul Kagame, came out and said, oh no, I'm not making any deal with Israel. Congo, no, I'm not making any deal with Israel. What about Chad? Oh no, I'm not making any deal with Israel. So who is Israel making a deal with? So Israel is engaging now in ethnic cleansing, and they're looking for a dumping ground in Africa for these Palestinians. Are Africans going to get caught up in this Palestinian conflict by admitting Palestinians that Israel doesn't want? So Israel wants to ship all these Palestinians away from the Gaza Strip and the West Bank to some of these African countries. That's their own way of solving this Palestinian problem. Is the international community going to let them, them do this? America is supporting Israel, so we're going to see what will happen. Then we move to Sudan. Sudan has had a civil war for over nine months. Two generals are tearing the country apart. Meetings have been arranged, but it looks like peace is nowhere to be found. So it is really sad when you look at the way two selfish men can break a whole country into pieces, kill a lot of people. It's because our people are heartless. So we need to revisit Sudan. Sudan has a very long history of problems, problems, problems. Okay? And finally, we take you to Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, we had complaints about the collapse of a mine. Over 11 people are dead. So this is not new. In the past, we've been reporting that Mine accidents are common in Zimbabwe just because precaution is not taken to make sure that these mines are secure. So when you look at this, it, what does it tell you? Africa it consists of banana republics. Banana republics, this term comes from the word banana. Why? Because in the old days of slavery, you have plantations. And the product that was grown on most of these plantations is banana. So when you look at a place, Africa is just like a banana republic because it is like the old days of slavery. You have a plantation, a master owns that plantation, they have Africans who work in that plantation. Then you have Africans who take care of this plantation. Okay? And Africa remains the same. 
Today, Africa is still a plantation. Africans are not free. Africans cannot make decisions in their own continent. Africans have resources, but foreigners treat them like slaves. They impose on them, use their resources for free. Then they complain that Africa is poor. We gave an example of France. France will pay for less than a dollar for minerals in Niger. Then France will turn around and sell those same minerals for 200 bucks. How fair is such trade? The purpose of this show is to wake you up as an African. Start thinking. Stop working the way your old guys are working. Let's change things. Let's create a new Africa. It can only happen if you get engaged, if you understand the problem. So what we're doing on this show now is to educate you, the masses. We want you to understand the problem so that you can respond, so you can rebel. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Now more than ever, it is critical that medical facilities utilize modern, reliable electronic health records. Introducing Alexia HTC, the innovative, affordable online solution for physicians and patients. Doctors' visits, diagnoses, prescriptions, and billing have never been easier. With Alexia HTC, you can work more efficiently with the integrated flexibility medical professionals need today. Schedule a live demonstration. Call or visit us at alexiahtc.com. you need tax preparation services, we can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.